From the first photo ever to exist, photographers have been impacting the lives of others through motivation, inspiration, sadness, frustration, anger, happiness, amazement, and a notion to bring about change. These photos are famous for their ability to pull some element of emotion from the viewer. But what did it take to create those feelings? What does it take in the photographer to make photos that have an impact? Is it the lighting? Is it the color? Is it the motivation of the photographer? What makes a great photo? And what makes a great photographer? Scott Midget of Big Shot Scott Photography and Us First Productions is a commercial photographer in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area. Scott started doing photography professionally in 2013. His focus has been on sports, fashion, and portrait photography. He has photographed celebrities such as Taraj P. Henson. When asked what photograph inspired him, he tells of a photograph by Neil Leifer. There's a very famous picture. I'm a big Muhammad Ali fan, big Muhammad Ali fan. And there's a picture of Muhammad Ali standing over top of um, Sonny Liston um, after the second fight. And he's standing over them, gesturing to him to get up. It's just something about that picture, again, that made me, you know, it captured the moment you know, so vividly, and it's a black and white picture. The, well, the picture I got is in black and white, you know, and it, it just captured that moment because he wasn't supposed to beat him, you know, so it was a true David and Goliath, you know, thing. And it just showed his confidence and his strength, but the picture just speaks volume. And it's a, it's not even the best picture in the world, but that's what I want people to get away from. Um, take away when I when I take their picture. It's like, oh, wow, you understand that moment, what happened. Curtis Martin is an architectural photographer in Baltimore, Maryland. With over 30 years in the industry, he has photographed many places all over the DMV and Mid-Atlantic area. As the photo of Muhammad Ali inspired Scott, Curtis tells of his inspiration in architectural photography. When I was young, my parents, my mother in particular, subscribed to Life Magazine. Um, so there were, once a week that would arrive and there were always, there was an always a, a photo story of something somewhere, some part of the world. Later, those I saw, as I said, weekly when they came in. But later when I started sort of exploring things, I started seeing images, if you can see this, like, like this one here. These are old cathedrals uh, in Europe. So as I saw photos like that, I started, how do you do that? You know, how do you, how do you capture that? How do you record that? So bit by bit, one little class after another, I, uh, my first photo class was in DC, um, 1969, 70, something like that. Yes. And the more classes I took, the more I saw, the more I wanted to see, and it led down this path that's still going. Uh, so it's, it's really, going after light. And then, uh, I, I, as I said, my first photo class was at Corcoran, Corcoran School of Art in DC. Then I came to Micah, Maryland Institute in Baltimore, um, where I majored. And it's been, uh, it's to me, a fun thing all along of just chasing the light. Stephanie McLaughlin is a portrait photographer based in Baltimore, Maryland. She's been taking photos for seven years, but freelancing in photography for four years. 
She's the current president of the photo club at the Community College of Baltimore County that inspires student photographers to go out and shoot. She tells of her inspiration. My dad has a best friend, Rob, who's a professional photographer, and he was one of the first people who ever taught me how to use this camera. And he became a mentor of mine, and I became his apprentice, and I would join him on shoots, help him with lighting, help him with gear, and just get to watch him work, which was amazing. And he's probably been one of my biggest inspirations in photography. And then outside of photographers, movies are probably my biggest inspiration, anything horror-related, anything... Um, creative related, like Blair Witch Project is a huge one. Anything by Alfred Hitchcock, like all of his ideas and his tones that he uses in his movies. And honestly, I just get inspired by different things, whether it's feelings and emotions um, related to mental health or whether it's movies, like I'll just think of an idea and be like, I wanna photograph something like this or create a concept. Um, Something else that drives me to photography is other photographers. Like I will see their work on social media or I will see like concepts they're trying or pose ideas that they're doing. And I was like, wow, I want to try that. Like I like what they're doing. I want to see what my take can be on that. After being inspired by other photographers and their work, how did these photographers take that inspiration and turn it into a career? And what is the attitude that these photographers display towards that career? You develop a little bit of confidence, you start door knocking and you gather a portfolio of images that you have shot and you sl slowly begin to make cold calls and you continue that. That's really what it is. Uh, I know now a number of people use Instagram, uh, social media. I don't because I have established myself well before that came into, into being. Um, and I continue with the client, my existing clients, and I seek new clients by send, learning who they are, who the marketing person is, uh, sending them examples of your work. And that would be done through email, of course. Uh, but that's how it, it goes. You just, you slowly start out and yeah, little steps, two or three steps forward, one step backward, two or three forward, two backward. And yeah, you continue to build and build and eventually you look up and go, oh, they're calling me. I didn't have to call so-and-so. I didn't have to chase you know, that one down. Uh, I love what I do. Uh, it is strictly, as I said, it is architecture. I do interiors, exteriors, um, but I just love going out. I look at this as, chasing the light. You cannot control the light on a building. You have to be there when the building is ready. I look at going on a shoot as playing. I'm going to have fun. And I just walk into the space and say, oh, this is new to me. How can I look at this? How can I you know, attack this in a way that's enjoyable to me? Uh, in high school, I did a lot of my seniors portraits and then um I had made some connections through them like their parents would tell another parent and be like oh she took my daughter's pictures um so that was word of mouth but lately especially during COVID times it's mainly been through social media because I'm not going out as much um so using it to market like taking photos giving people examples and then being like announcing like hey I take photos <laughs> you know or hey these are my prices or um Anything like that, I think, is one of the best ways to, to market yourself. And that's what I've been doing. And it's been working for me. Um, Consistency um, and just not saying no, you know, so and asking questions to, to the, to, you know, I'm, I was so blessed and I'm still blessed now to be surrounded by ladies and, and guys who either we've grown up together in this photography or they were willing to share you know, their, their skill with me to teach me stuff that, I, you know, I go out to a football game to shoot and I had, you know, I had a, a D3100, right? You know, so I, you know, somebody run by my camera, go click, 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 click. But the guy beside me, his camera's going, and I'm like, what is that? You know, what are you shooting with? 
it helped me to say, you need to pull back because you're not as good as you think you are. And you need to learn this before you get out there and say, hey, I'm a, because you're going to run up against a situation where you're going to say you're professional and you're not, and somebody's going to pay you to do a professional job and you screw it up. All photographers have a certain drive that leads them to take photos. But what is it that will separate each photographer apart from others? What's going to separate each photographer? So each photographer with the trillions of images that are out there and that are, that are produced daily, each photographer has a slightly unique perspective, slightly unique point of view. Uh, and that's really what you bring to the table. That's what you bring to the process is, is your unique vision and celebrate it. Just use it. I think I've been told anyway that what, what makes my photography stand out is my pictures tell a story. So you can, you can, you know, like video tells a story, obviously. But if I take a series of pictures, you can take my pictures and put together what happened. And like that Muhammad Ali picture that I was telling you, that's, that's what I inspired to do. It, it tells a story. I tell people all the time, it doesn't have to be the greatest uh, photograph. It's what people got out of that. A lot of people don't care how sharp, we, we as photographers will look at it and be like, oh, the eyes aren't as sharp and this and that and other. But it's like, okay, yeah, but, when you showed that to, I, I took a picture of um, one of my, um, my dog that passed. And, you know, when I showed that to somebody else, they burst out crying because it was like, it's what it, it wasn't that it was, you know, the, the greatest dog picture in the world. It was what it sent, how he looked at that time. And because he was always a happy dog and always playful and this and that and other. And it showed in that picture. I feel like my capture of emotion, and I don't feel like it's very distinct that like no one else does it, but I feel like in the photos that I see um, compared to mine, like not trying to like be like mine's better than theirs, that kind of comparison, but just looking at it like versus, I feel like mine captures emotion pretty well. Um, whether that's like happiness or whether that's like distraught, like any kind of emotion, I feel like I do that pretty well. And I feel like that might, makes my photos stand out. As the molding of a great photographer continues and their eye develops to see what is a great photo, what is it that they envision to be a great photo? And how do they get those great shots? What makes a good shot for me is it being genuine. You know, it being where it's not, you're not, what makes a good shot is you're not even trying to get it. You're not even trying, you're, you're not focused on it being a, you know, you can just feel it when it happens, you know, to say, you know, hold up, hold up right there. Yep. Just stand right there. And you take that picture, you know, and you might be like, what, what did I do now? If I say, if you say, what did I do? And I have to recreate it. I've lost it, you know, cause it's like, no, I don't, you know, it's the candid, you know, it's the candid thing of you being you that you, and, and the whole thing is, I tell you, you have to see it before you shoot it, if that makes sense. I already know what it looks like before I do it. So when I see it, it's like, that's it right there. That's what I was looking for, you know? So yeah, like your clothes, you know, um, I don't know if you remember when we did the shoot at the studio yeah. and I asked, you know, cause everybody, I'm like, no, no, what does she want? Cause I know what I'm seeing, but I need to know what the designer wants so that I can make sure I see that and what I'm shooting, you know, and whatever the movement is and this and that and other, show you on camera, is this what you're looking for? As soon as you say, well, yeah, that one, all right, I got it, you know, and we can move forward with it, you know, so that's, you know, that's, that's what makes a good picture to me. Um, the, the candidness of it, you know, being like catching that moment. Yeah. First, I am delivering to, I'm delivering something that my client is going to use in marketing. It, they are marketing themselves or uh, I'm showing their vision. So it has to please both of us. Um, the client has to be 
happy putting this into their portfolio. Uh, it has to be a representation of their work. What's going to make a good photo is a happy client. Um, and it's, it's something that I feel good in delivering, something that I feel good about. Yes. In light of what makes a great photo, what risks do photographers have to take to execute their vision for a photograph? So I, I shot in an area that I shouldn't be in. Um, of all things, it was an abandoned school and they had a real cool, like they, they had a playground where there was a basketball court, but they had taken the basketball rims and stuff down. But behind it, they had like this hill that had a whole bunch of um, ivory on it. It looked real cool. And I'm like, I need to put a motorcycle over there. You know, so it said, do not enter. But we did it anyway, right? We did it anyway. Well, of all things, the bad part about it is when we were wrapping <laughs> When we were wrapping up, almost done, um, we were wrapping up, someone actually broke into the school, not related to us, right? The guy breaks into the school and he walks right past us. And we speak and everything. Next thing you know, police come from everywhere with guns drawn and tell us, get on the ground. And I'm like, well, pick, you know, but and like I said, he broke into the school. Well, of all schools, the Prince George's County Police decide to use that school as a training facility for police officers. <laughs> so, yeah, not only are we trespassing, we're trespassing on police. And like, and, you know, and like <laughs> I said, you know, and they got us face down. They got us face down on the ground or what have you. So that was probably, you know, there's, there's a lot of times where I know I'm not supposed to shoot where I shoot, but, you know, I just wait until somebody says something. You know, but that one, yeah, that was the worst. That was the worst <laughs> by far. I've never been that scared. Yeah, that was the worst. From film to phones, photographers have the ability to capture great photos. But how does equipment impact how photographers capture those photos? These that I showed you are done on a four by five camera. A four by five, uh, which is sheet film. I currently use a Canon digital. The advantage of a, a four by five of a view camera is the fact that you can raise and lower the, um, the lens in relation to the subject. So you can control the straight lines. Um, that carries over into the Canon because uh, I only, I use exclusively perspective control lenses on everything so that you can, you know, keep the building straight. That's the object, yeah. Buildings don't look good when they're falling over. Architects tend not to like that. So editing, I use Photoshop, that's the easiest. I use photo, not the easiest, but the easiest part of that answer is Photoshop and Lightroom. Equipment wise, I'm a Nikon shooter um, and I, Currently, I have the Nikon D850, which in today's modern stuff, it's like a dinosaur. And that camera's only like three years old because um, it's a DSLR. Um, and then I have, uh, I shoot with the, um, the Z6 II, um, even, and that's mirrorless. But um, so I got the Z6 II, I got a Z6, and I have a Z50, you know, uh, all, like I said, all Nikon. I use a Canon 5D Mark IV as my primary camera, and I also have a 5D Mark III as a backup in case I do like a large shoot and I need two bodies, um, and I have both. I primarily use a 50 millimeter lens, although I have two other lenses, but that's my favorite one, so I always use the 50 millimeter 1.8 by Canon. Uh, for editing, I use Lightroom primarily, uh, Photoshop as well, but primarily I use Lightroom. Uh, when people see good photos, a lot of comments you'll see on Instagram is, what camera do you use? It's like, okay, well, I could get the same shot on a less um, expensive camera. You know, like it's not the camera that takes the good photos, it's the person. Like you could give the same camera to two different people and let's say this person has like 10 years of photography experience, had a lot of education, has a great eye for it. And then this other person who, this is their first time holding a camera. 
or maybe they've like had it for like a couple weeks. So they just got it as a birthday present. I don't know. But those two pictures are going to look so different if they take a picture of the same thing. They're going to look so completely different because it's not the camera. So I think it be, can be taken the other way um, too. Like, yes, they seem more professional, but it might not always be the camera that's getting the, or it's, like, yes, different cameras will have different quality. Like a crop frame is going to have a much different quality and then the full frame, there is that whole argument. But it definitely is the person that creates the, the better quality images. I, I actually had somebody tell me today off of a picture that I posted and I actually had an attitude about it. She actually told me, she said, your camera takes great pictures. I'm like, my camera takes great pictures. And I told her, I said, well, I took that picture in 2017. I don't even have that camera anymore. You know, I'm like, it's not. And I told her, I said, it's not the camera. I could have taken that camera with anything. Yeah, I mean, that picture with any, it's not, but people don't understand that. It was like, oh, your camera. And they don't understand that's actually an insult, but it is what it is. When working in the industry of photography, you learn to become flexible and patient. And we don't just mean waiting for good weather. In what ways do photographers have to be flexible? What were or are their struggles in becoming or maintaining to stay a great photographer? Getting recognition, getting people to answer the phone call, uh, getting getting in the door. That's always going to be the challenge. Just simply getting in the door. Hi, I'm here. Look at me. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And it's, it's usually, okay, fine, fine, go away. But it's, it's, it's getting recognition and you have to be persistent. You absolutely have to be persistent. Uh, they aren't going to come to you because you know, you're cute or whatever, but you have to, you have to produce good work, but you will have to be persistent, spread yourself, continue to look at as many you know, avenues as, as possible, continue to explore. Well, I'd say continue, if you any photographer should continue to educate themselves. If you don't, you become a dinosaur. And those of us who started in film and were smacked with the digital transfer had to adapt or go away. Uh, it's always going to continue that way, uh, whether it was from, from black and white into color, uh, or film into digital, that will continue. That will always be the trend. And more electronics are coming. And who knows what that's going to look like? No one knows. But the, the industry as a whole, uh, it's going to be an interesting ride, I think. Uh, just try and follow and keep up with it. So don't be surprised by, don't be surprised by these surprises. They're coming. Uh, keep your mind open. And, and ride with it, yes. For freelance purposes, probably gaining leads or customers or clients, um, especially this past year because of COVID, it's been like a huge struggle. Um, that one on the freelance side, as a creative side, standing out, like wanting as an industry, like being a freelance photographer, you want people to book you. And to do that, you need to show that you are different from another photographer that they can just find on Instagram or find down the street. Like what makes you stand out and what, or what makes me stand out is definitely one, like a struggle. Like I want to show like, you're not going to get the same images with me as you would this other person. And like, if you like their style better, that's fine. But that's probably like a big struggle. It's like trying to brand myself. I would say the price of photography, the actual financial side you know and you might have to buy a piece of equipment that for this one shoot that you might not use again for two or three years you know but you need it for this one shoot you know so yeah it's, it's, it's i did inventory like i got seventy five thousand dollars worth of equipment you know in my office right now you know so but and did i make seventy five thousand dollars last year no not from photography you know so but the joy of it is 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 my pursuit so yeah. In the current world of photography, as technology is improving and taking over all industries, 
How does this affect photographers? And what is the expectation of how it will affect photographers in the future? Just from my perspective and, and everyone that I've seen, again, through social media, like everyone's just being creative right now. Like, especially with, with COVID and quarantine, like a lot of people were limited in their abilities. And so I've seen a ton of people experimenting in self-portraits. Or if they used to do portraits, maybe now they're doing food photography or flat lays or documentary style. Like, I feel like the industry right now, because of where we are as like a nation, is has proved to be a lot more creative in instances where we didn't think we'd be able to, which I think is very positive. And people are taking advantage of the resources that they have and still creating art, even though like everything we're going through right now is like a huge struggle which I think is a really positive thing. But but look at, it's, it's about what you're capturing. You know, look at the news, like, you know, from, um, you know, George Floyd, you know, it wasn't somebody there with, you know, it was somebody with a, with a you know, with a, with a cell phone that caught that. You know, um, this young man that got um, shot by this police officer the other day, you know, it was her body cam that caught all that stuff. That's the age that we're in. We're in a show me now age, you know, where I'll buy this, this phone. And then that's the other thing, right? Your upload, you know, you take a picture with your phone and it's, it can go viral just like that. We can't, we can't do that with, uh, you know, with our, with our cameras. I mean, you have the ability to download onto your phone and this and that and other, but with my phone, I take that picture and it's live. So you now have the ability to adjust your aperture you can take long exposure photos. I think on the iPhone 11, maybe newer. No, I think it's the 11. You can do wide angle shots. Like they are um, expounding so much in their abilities and in their technology. There's a really interesting thing. Of course, you can't change your lenses so much. And it, I think there is some limiting things about using phones. But I think that they've improved so much that it's like a really valid way to take photography now or to take pictures. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's all going towards the mirrorless realm now. And I don't know after mirrorless what there is, but it's gone from film to, you know, the digital DSLR um, age to now it's going to the mirrorless age. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, um, the, the set that, so a lot of the stuff that I shoot um, for this movie stuff, I'm shooting it while while filming is going on. So, you know, with the DSLR, it makes a noise, a clicking noise every, you know, the little camera flips, you know, every time you take a picture. Well, you can't do that, you know, during filming because you can hear all that. With mirrorless cameras, the silent shutter feature, you're taking pictures like, did I just take, because you can't hear it, you know, so it makes it more valuable to that industry. And they'll ask you straight off, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I want to be the photographer. What do you shoot with? If you don't tell them you shoot with something mirrorless like that, they'll be like, oh, yeah, no, we can't use you. You know, because we need this technology now. You know, so that's where we're going with it to the mirrorless age. Where is the industry going? I don't know. <laughs> and it will be, uh, it'll be fun to watch it. Um, I'm not sure the industry knows. The industry requires much from photographers, especially in the beginning stages of becoming the next great photographer. What does the next great student photographer need to become the next great photographer? Keep shooting, keep looking, keep exploring your vision. Um, and it, you have to remember, this is your vision. This is how you see something. Uh, you will, as you go along, your vision is going to change. It will absolutely change. If I were to look back at some of the stuff I shot you know, when I was in school, uh, even as, as late as when I, I was in Micah, um, I go, what were you looking at? What were you thinking when you shot this? But your vision is going to change. Keep looking, keep exploring, look at paintings, but spend a lot of time in galleries. Look at Rembrandt, look at how Rembrandt used light. Shoot everything shoot everything and all day long as often as you can that is really how you learn um education is a great way to go so if you just pick up a camera and you go take pictures of your pet 
and then your family and then the nature outside and stuff. And you just shoot, you're going to figure out what you like to take pictures of. You're going to figure out different angles. You're going to get all those like beginner shots out of the way. Like there's always, whenever someone picks up a camera, they have to like point one up at a tree and get the tree branches. I still like taking those. You'll get all those like first camera jitters out and then you'll really start to develop your style and what you like to take. But that's my biggest advice. And a barber should know how that haircut's going to look before he ever touches your hair. As soon as you say, I want this type of haircut, it's already in their head how it's going to look. Same thing with a beautician. I already know how it's going to look. You know how that dress is going to look or how you want it to look before you sit down, you know, and, and design and, and you know, um, sew it and put it together. I think the same thing with photography. It's, it's either in, it's got to be in you. You know, and in your way of how you want to interpret, because after a while, you can teach somebody how to shoot, but I can't teach you how to interpret, you know, what you're shooting. You got to have an eye to capture what you want to capture out of whatever it is that you're taking. And everybody doesn't have that. So that, that you know, to recap, it's be consistent, be patient, don't give up. Just don't give up, you know, just, you know, it's going to be hard. It really is. And it's going to be times because Lord knows I got there where it's like, I don't even want to do this no more because people don't appreciate, you know, what I'm doing. Don't give up and look at it that way. Do it for you. Do it for you first, you know, not for anybody else, you know, do it for you. Don't look for the pats on the back and this and that from other people. Do it because you love doing it. You know, not for the money, not for the credit, not for anything. Do it because even even jobs, like I said, the free ones or ones that you, you take pennies for, do that because it was worth doing it for you. You know, not for the money, but you got the gratification out of doing whatever it was that you shot. That's, you know, that's, I cannot stress that enough, but do it for you and your eye. When you start doing it, when somebody starts dictating, when people start dictating to you, you know, you're being hired to do it your way. You know what I mean? You're doing, if a person looks at your work, they should be hiring you not because you can do it, but they're hiring you for the spin that you're going to put on it, your mark. And if they don't understand that, and they just want to clone, then go get somebody from Life Touch and all this to give you a school picture. But you're hiring me to do it the way I see it. And never let anybody take that from you. Always make sure it's, don't let the industry dictate to you how you do what you love. Simple as that. That, yeah, don't let them, don't let anybody dictate to you to do what you love. Do it your way.